Today I want to give you my first impressions on the Tier 7 British battleship HMS Hawk, which is, well, in the olden days, it would have been the pinnacle of the new alternative British battleship line, which we could call the Battle Cruiser line, because every ship in this line, which ends with the Tier 8 Duncan, that is not currently available as this line is right now in early access at the time of this recording and the only way to obtain these ships is by buying crates from the store. But this whole line is a battle cruiser line and as such it shares certain characteristics with the German battle cruiser line that we have which ends with the Prinz Ruprecht at tier 8. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'll give you a rundown on the ship's stats and tell you how it plays. And I think this game that I have for you in the background here is a pretty good demonstration of the efficacy of this particular ship. I think a lot of people might find this line a bit of a challenge to play, especially the typical battleship mains who are used to the luxuries of, you know, having armor and such. In any case... HMS Hawk has 73,800 hit points, which is quite respectable for a battleship at Tier 7. But as we see this Iowa here, actually, let's pause and take a look at this shot with the Hawk's armor piercing against the broadside Iowa. The shells are out. They're going to, of course, make contact with that American battleship's hull, and they hit him for two citadels and 36,000 damage. To be fair, he citadels us in return, but only once, so we certainly won that trade there. Let's take a look at the Hawk's armor scheme just for a moment. You'll notice it's got 25mm plating on the bow and stern. It's got 32mm plating along the side and deck, and the citadel is rather comically exposed. It's gigantic, and it sits very high above the water, so this is quite a vulnerable battleship. It can certainly angle its side armor against anything with guns smaller than the Musashi, but even while angled, you can still expect to get penned by battleships that have really good pen or, you know, other battleships that have improved penetration angles. They aren't going to have any problems going through 32 millimeters. So you do have to be almost perfectly angled, and you can defend yourself. We'll see an example of that later. But also, having 32mm armor makes you quite vulnerable to high explosive spam. And unlike some of the main lines of British battleships, this line does not have super heels, at least not at this tier. Hawk's heel is conventional. Duncan, and if we ever get the St. Vincent at legendary tier, they will probably have super zombie heels, but the Hawk does not. Certainly something to keep in mind. As for the guns, though, they are 9 16-inch or 406 millimeter guns, larger than its counterpart at tier 7 in the Vanguard, which only has 15-inch guns. They have a range of 18.6 kilometers, reload time of 28.9 seconds with my commander build, maximum AP shell damage 12,600, and maximum HE shell damage 5,950 with a 45% chance to start fire. So not only does this thing enjoy good 16-inch armor piercing as we've seen against the Iowa, it also enjoys the common British battleship characteristic of having excellent HE, which you'll see come into play later. It has torpedoes too, for what it's worth, but it's only got two single launcher tubes on either side of the ship. They have a 8km range, they go at 61 knots, and they hit for a maximum damage of 1,586. You'll see me launch some later on in the battle, but I have yet to find an instance where they're actually usable. This is not the kind of ship that you want to take into a brawl just so you can use the torpedoes. It does not have enough armor. I think it's more played better at longer to medium range if you try to take it in these torpedoes are maybe a trump card if you're in a 1v1 brawl versus a battleship that doesn't have them you sort of drive by them shoot your guns launch a couple of the torps they might go down but i don't think you want to make a habit of using these torpedoes they just aren't going to come in handy all that often 
The AA defense is something that we will, of course, gloss over because who cares? AA isn't really effective against destroyers, and I don't think this thing in particular has fantastic AA, but what it does have is pretty fantastic maneuverability stats. 31.3 knot top speed, big turning circle of 910 meters, but a fairly excellent rudder shift for a battleship of 16.1 seconds. So it's quite maneuverable in that sense. And the concealment, with a concealment module and a rank 16 condo as one inspiration on my commander, is 12 kilometers by sea, making this a very stealthy battleship for tier 7, which is good. Uh, it helps with the lack of armor. So in any case, I think this ship adheres to what I like to call the battle cruiser philosophy, and I think that is not necessarily a bad thing for this game. The battle cruisers have the same firepower as a battleship, say, you know, they have 16-inch guns or whatever it is, so they can dev strike things across the map just like any battleship. But on the other hand, they tend to have better concealment and they have better speed than conventional battleships, making them easier to position around the map. And as we've discussed before, the primary goal of the battleship is not to sit still, bow tank, and let the enemy farm them while they're in a stationary position, despite the fact that that is the way most battleship mains play this game. The goal of the battleship is to find a place on the map where the enemy has to push past your guns in order to achieve some sort of goal, i.e. set up crossfires. And when you've got 31 knots of speed, and by the way, you have an engine boost consumable, we didn't talk about that, but when you have that engine boost consumable and you can go at like 35, 36 knots, you can position around the map quite easily, and the concealment also helps you do that. But of course, this is a glass cannon. And as you've seen, one of our turrets has been permanently taken out, the front super-firing one. Don't know how it happened. I suspect it was the Jean Bar that actually did it. We can't see him now because he's behind the islands. But even with two turrets, we have 73,000 damage done. Well, okay, 95,000 damage done now that the two Kutuzovs want to donate their HP to us. They're both going to be very gracious in that act. You can see they're both broadside. That one takes a massive hit from another one of my teammates. We are getting chunked a little bit by that Jean Bar, but we still got some heals left. Kutuzov's trying to heal. We only have two turrets left. One's going for him. You can see that the shells aren't super accurate, but they do take him out. And so we'll send the other turret at the other Kutuzov, and we get blessed by Jesus with excellent dispersion, although we do get denied the double strike. The Kutuzov is down, though. The base is safe. That just leaves three battleships left, none of whom are anywhere near our base. So we're good for the moment. In any case, the British battle cruisers are indeed glass cannons, but as you've seen, they do have great firepower with their AP, and they do have excellent HE. We'll be seeing an example of that against a very unfortunate Jean Bar shortly. But I think these battle cruisers are best used at medium to long range, essentially zipping around the map and trying to create crossfires. And I think they'll be very good at that, although I suspect some people will struggle with them due to the lack of armor. If you're the kind of battleship player whose main tactic is to push straight in, point your bow at the enemy, and shoot them with only your front two turrets, you will fail in this ship. It will be overmatched by literally everything, including this Jean Bar. But if you understand the concept of angling, you can protect yourself in this ship. Enter the Jean Bar now. You can see his guns are looking at us, and we are trying to maintain an angle toward him. We're very steeply angled. Our rear turret isn't quite on target, and we want the Jean Bar to shoot the side armor. He does. All the shells bounce. They do zero damage. If he had aimed a little bit further ahead and hit our bow, all of his shells would have simply overmatched and gone through and maybe done some full penetrations. But because we're angled properly, we can defend ourselves. That is something to consider. The bow armor value on any ship is not the be-all, end-all of how tanky they are. Bow tanking really is not, in my view, the first resort you should go to when you're trying to protect yourself. You should practice good angling. You want the shells to hit the robust 
belt armor instead of your bow or stern, and that's something you can practice in any ship, even if it doesn't have an overmatchable bow. That is the proper way to angle. And in any case, this game is basically wrapped up. It should end in our victory, but we do have some low-health teammates, including the battleship over there, who barely has any health, and the cruiser, they're going to do a good job of taking down that last remaining battleship, but that's going to leave the Jean Bar left. And we ourselves don't have much health either. We did have some success angling against the Jean Bar earlier on, of course, but if he decides that he wants to aim at our bow or stern, he could chunk us very easily, and it wouldn't take an awful lot of effort for him to sink us if he does choose to do that. So we are trying to be careful, and there's really no reason to push straight into him and risk our ship, since we're so far ahead on points and he's the last remaining red alive. He would have to sink all of us and obtain a solo warrior in order to win this match, and I don't think that's going to happen. He may be able to sink the friendly battleship if he decides to shoot at that guy, but for some reason he's shooting at the cruiser. And now we finally have an angle on him again with only our two turrets. From this point onward, we're going to switch exclusively to the HE, which, to be fair, it doesn't hit quite as hard as some of the other British battleship HE. A lot of those, I think, have over 6, 6k uh, maximum HE damage. This thing has just under. Nevertheless, it is quite effective. It does do an awful lot of damage when it hits parts of the ships that it can penetrate, and I believe with it being British HE, it enjoys the quarter caliber penetration. There you see a very good salvo against the Jean Bar, and you see that 45% fire chance in action. Nearly 50%, so more or less, every time you shoot these guns, you can almost expect a fire. This fire chance is very high, and we lit a double fire on the Jean Bar. Of course, our AP could penetrate his superstructure, but as you can see, the dispersion on this ship, while sometimes it's excellent and the accuracy is, you know, fantastic, the shells go right where you want them, other times the dispersion is maybe not so great and the shells land in the water all around the ship. So we could try to dial in the AP to the Jean Bar superstructure, but it's not going to be as effective as the HE. I think this line will reward you for switching shells at the appropriate times. And especially in the British battleship, there is, in fact, an appropriate time to switch to HE. And that would be when you have something like a Jean Bar bow tanking you. Because sure, maybe you can chunk him in the superstructure with the AP, but he's coated in 32 millimeters of armor, which your HE can penetrate literally everywhere. So... Pretty much anywhere we hit this Jean Bar, aside from the turrets and the Citadel belt armor, the HE will pen, it will do damage, and then it's got a great fire chance, which can melt him down over time. I think he started this engagement with nearly full health, but now he's nearly been reduced to nothing, and all the while our damage numbers have been climbing up, despite the fact that halfway through this match we lost one third of our firepower. I think this is a demonstration of how this ship, when it's played according to its strengths, can do very, very well. It truly is the textbook definition of glass cannon. Now, of course, I have the entire line from Tier 4 up to Tier 7, but so far I've only played the Tier 7 ship. I don't know how the line is preceding this particular vessel, but we'll try to check it out as time goes on. I can tell you, though, that I have grinded this entire line once on a different game, and that, of course, would be WoW's PC. When the line first became publicly available on that game, I went all the way up and down it, and I had a great time with pretty much every ship. I don't think there was a ship in this line that was terrible. They were all pretty strong, particularly the Duncan at Tier 9 on WoW's PC, Tier 8 here on Legends, and the St. Vincent tier 10 on PC. If we ever get it in Legends, it should be Legendary tier. Both of those ships are fantastic, and the ships before them are pretty good too, including the Hawk. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.